Hi, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to do another perf audit and I'm going to look at the Dallas Morning News. Uh, I chose the Dallas Morning News for a particular reason um, and this particular page that we're looking at because uh, I try to follow the Texas Rangers baseball team and I am from the Dallas area and still have most of my family there. So keeping up with the local news, especially around the baseball team and stuff, is kind of important to me. But I, I wanted to do an audit of the Dallas Morning News, not so much of the content that they provide me, but the fact that it's a typical newspaper site that is poorly done, um, from a, especially from a performance uh, perspective. And uh, I wanted to go into a just just a, a, a what I call an interior page on a site uh, for a particular reason, uh, because we I think we tend to focus a lot of our uh, performance audit uh, attention on home pages of sites. So if you go to httparchive.org, for example, uh, the URLs that are analyzed uh, by Steve are the home pages and not, uh, say, per se, internal pages. Um, and to me, that's that can be a little deceptive. And I think that's one of the reasons why uh, the numbers are actually lower than what I experience when I go out and randomly audit pages like these. So this is, this, like I said, this is the Dallas Morning News interior page. And I have run some web page tests. See, oh, testing failed. That's great. I was trying to get one from uh, the UK. We'll rerun that test while we're waiting. Uh, but I'm going to start here with the home page. But what I wanted to do today was also kind of mix in uh, the edge uh, developer tools in the network tab in particular and that way maybe we can break down just a few things and maybe you'll learn how to read a waterfall in one of the developer tools a little better so the first thing I want to do is I always look over here and this kind of tells me the uh, stuff that's going on wow the whole page just reloaded on me really the whole page just reloaded that's terrible that's that's that is a problem that I do see on newspaper sites where I'm halfway through an article and very engaged and all of a sudden it just refreshes on me and I have to wait 20 to 30 seconds to, to be able to read again. Sometimes I can't even scroll back to where I was because the browser's having to constantly re-render, go back through the, cycle, the critical rendering path all over again because of content coming down and changing the integrity of the DOM, uh, things like that, fonts getting loaded and so forth. Um, that was just a fortuitous adventure there. But I want to show you something that I do notice here is that, hey, we've got little tiny lines here, which, which wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing, except the fact that when you actually roll over and you get the details like we just saw there. Now, of course, it's not going to do it. Let's see. Here we go. Um, you see that that's uh, at least a half a second right there, just downloading that one JavaScript file, which is 1.1 kilobytes in size. That's a half a second for 1.1 kilobyte file. Um, now, you know me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ding them on a few things here. First, they should bundle and minify all this JavaScript. Two, I can see right here, this is JSON2. This is a very outdated file. This is something we would have done back in 2008, 2009. But today, the browsers all support JDiv, JSON functionality natively. We don't need this file anymore, so they should just take this file out. Uh, if they're going to use it at all, they would do a feature detection and cut the mustard and load a, uh, a core site. Or if you are still inclined to use polyfills, you would then load a polyfill for this. But this is not something you would download to a modern browser. Um, just for fun, I want to go see. Okay, it is. It's not in uh, I nine or eight mode. Sometimes a lot of sites will send down the header tags and or the the, the, tie, the meta tags and tell the bra uh, especially internet explorer to render an emulation in fact uh, this is edge edge doesn't support uh, the emulation mode so even if those tags are present it just ignores them okay um but what we do see is that this this just takes a long time to load and obviously the waterfall is really tall right so this is really bad this is just a really bad sign um these right here for the DOM content loaded, you can see that originally they were a little spaced out, now they're getting better. That's because this page never stops loading stuff. It just constantly is loading crap. Look at this, it just keeps going. 
Okay, this is a newspaper site. This is basically a read-only experience. There's no reason to constantly be polling for new stuff and grabbing new content constantly. So that's really bad. The places where I do, say, poll for new data and grab new data tend to be um, line of business monitoring kind of applications. So if you go back to my uh, original professional career back in the factory floor, um, talk about SCADA, MMIs, uh, things like that, um, where you're get, trying to get real-time feedback from equipment and stuff like that. Or if you're like in a network operations center, maybe you're monitoring your network or the health of things going on. If you're if you're in that kind of scenario, the constant, then yeah, you want to try to get data as, as rapidly as possible. But uh, for something like a newspaper, there, there's there's really no need for that. That's just a bad business decision. If nothing else. Um, another thing before we before I lose track of this. Um, lots of errors being logged, just constantly logging exceptions here, and it's just growing. Another bad sign. This is just a sign of a of a really uh, poor uh, technical analysis and QA process. This should be picked up, and nothing should ship that that ships uh, potential errors, uh, exceptions like this in your in your code. Um, that's something that I would just completely uh, eliminate. All together, uh, this is this is nothing but bad. Okay, um, let's go up here and look at the uh, the initial request. And what I want to do is I just want to filter just by documents. So this is going to be just for HTML request. Um, this is how many HTML requests are being made to compose this page. This is another really really bad sign. Um, in all honesty, you should have a request for markup. That's it. Everything else should be uh, job, you know, resources, AJAX calls. That's it. There's really nothing else you should be uh, going and gathering markup directly. Um, if you're using iframes, I would probably tell you to get away from that and, um, and not do it. Um, those are kind of, uh, a, I would consider a bad practice. Um, what I want to do, let's go into the timings here. Let's just see what we got here. Uh, we got it was stalled for uh, 1.77. Um, so this is the waiting or the time for first byte. Um, that alone is not a bad. Here we go. We're refreshing all over again. Again, no reason for a refresh. I got a feeling it had to do with something recycling internally. All right. So we'll go back here. Um, 2.49 milliseconds. This is because the DNS is cached already. We'll look at that in web page test here in a second. Um, making a connection. This is another thing that is important to note. Um, so browsers make six to eight parallel connections to a server to request content. Uh, you want to kind of try to eliminate as many of these new connections as possible because it takes effort and time to open up each of those connections. And this is, can be a problem when you're domain sharding. That means when you're using uh, more than one domain to request content. That's not necessarily a bad thing. But what happens, if you go look at HTTP Archive, I think we're right around 20 separate domains now is kind of the average. Um, that means, um, A, you have to do DNS lookup for all those different domains. Then you have to open up the connections to each of those um, different domains. And that can be time consuming. Generally, when I look at a sharding uh, you know, choice or architecture, uh, I'm going to try to keep that to as few as possible, two, three possible domains. This is going to cause a lot of people some heartaches, uh, not necessarily developers. I don't think developers are, are really aware of third-party content, but this is where the marketing guys and the higher-ups just throw crap into their, their application, which is one of the problems a newspaper site like the Dallas Morning News um, has, is they have a lot of third-party crap uh, being uh, loaded, and that just uh, creates more and more of these connections, which, which slows down the, uh, the entire rendering process. Um, the time to first byte, uh, 60 milliseconds, that's really not a bad deal. What you're really looking at here is how long does it take to render this on the server? Um, you generally want to be under 100 milliseconds for that. Uh, so 59 milliseconds is good. Uh, obviously, the shorter time, the better. Uh, this is why it's really super important to have good caching strategies on your server. Um, so if you're an ASP.NET guy like me, you want to avoid going through any of the, the server-side rendering logic that you have as much as possible. You don't want to hit the databases. Uh, honestly, you don't even want to go through your ASP.NET pipeline if you can avoid it. So that's why output cache is really important. Having um, pre-rendered content 
that's essentially static at that point available um, so that it just more or less just instantly returns is what your goal should be. Um, you should only want to go through that logic um, like once or once, you know, every and for a newspaper site like this, maybe once every couple of minutes, go through that uh, that actual cycle, the ASP.NET full pipeline cycle to re-render con new content. Um, newspaper sites, they obviously want to be on breaking news and, and get the, the information out there as quickly as possible. But uh, honestly, it's it's not that common um, for new articles and stuff to be published. And when I say not that common, uh, it's not something that's happening real time instantaneously. Again, let's go back to the factory floor, maybe a stock ticker or something like that. Not going to happen that fast. So just think of the nature of your data there. And then the downloading, uh, 1.6 milliseconds for this content, which was uh, just under 14 kilobytes. Now that's that's an important number right there. Um, they hit the 14 kilobyte goal with their, their initial markup payload, which is great. The reason why you want to hit that 14 kilobyte goal, if you remember, is TCP has a concept of what we call a slow start. And so we have these packets of data and the first packet is 16 kilobytes in size but 2 kilobytes is reserved for header information and 14 kilobytes is reserved for actual data payload um, so by getting their content in under 14 kilobytes this was able to return in one request frame and so that means you have a lot less latency so if this was say 15 or 16 kilobytes that would have had to have been spread across two different packet requests which means it would have been back and forth back and forth and so you you were able to avoid that and this is something that i strive for generally with um, my single page applications uh, i can hit this 14 kilobyte for uh, all the critical css markup uh, very easily i can i can get you know 20 to 30 pages worth of content uh, in under 14 kilobytes uh, and that's that's a very uh, big number to to be able to achieve because that, that gives your page that almost instant boot experience that you're really striving for it makes your customers much happier okay um, so we've dinged them on uh, uh, JavaScript and uh, not bundling minifying and that's that's always a problem with most sites I see um, oh yeah these are all nothing but markup uh, right now and you can see this is just a lot of market pages we got 35 out of 248 and growing request um, it's a total of 63 kilobytes that's not too bad but as you can see right down here 3.4 megabytes transferred um, that's actually pretty low uh, for this, this site um, I have seen it down try to download like 12 megs for a page uh, which is really bad um, Right now we're up to 76 seconds and it's still growing because it's still making requests. And there's the reload we we're looking for. That's, isn't that terrible? That's just horrible. Um, let's go look at the, well, let's just, let's just skip this because this is, this is going to reload on us over and over again. Um, all right, let's go back to my web page test. So this is the home page and 3.3 uh, megs. Um, like I said, usually when I've audited the Dallas Morning News, any of their pages and content, it's been 10 to 12 megs. So maybe they have done some work uh, to avoid some stuff. But let's look at this right here. 18.441 seconds to load. That's horrid. Um, we've got 2.75 or 0.275 seconds to time to first byte. That's a quarter second, just over a quarter second if you're really uh, interested. Um, it's not too bad uh, for time to first byte, but... Um, Let's put it in perspective. I can build uh, 20 to 30 page single page applications. The entire content is loaded in three fourths of a second. So, you know, um, doesn't even start rendering till 5.6 seconds. Again, terrible. Uh, they should start rendering it in a second. If you're not rendering uh, content within a second, um, your users are already mentally disengaging uh, from your experience. And by three seconds, over half of them have already left with your page and your site and gone on to something else. At one second, the mind does start wandering around. Instantaneous is perceived at 100 milliseconds. That's why even this quarter uh, second right here uh, can be a little problematic. If you can get this down to uh, 100, 150 milliseconds, you're going to mentally engage your user because the stuff's going to start rendering quickly. Uh, again, if you're not rendered under, started rendering in under a second, they're going to wonder if it's even going to work. Um, it's a little anxiety that builds up. Speed index is 8156. I, th I have seen the speed index on the Dallas Morning News be in the 30 to 40,000 range. So today it looks like they're doing pretty good. Um, this is not a bad number of DOM elements, 1,484. Um, I'm not going to knock them on that. 
I do see a lot of sites that have 20, 30, 40,000 DOM elements. Horrible, horrible um, uh, experience. Again, the waterfall, this is actually a pretty short waterfall uh, for the Dallas Morning News. Uh, like I said, I've done in the past uh, probably t two to three times the size of that waterfall. So maybe they are making things a little better. Let's go down to this film strip view. As you can see, it's six seconds is when we've got some content rendered. If we go back, you can see nothing's rendered, and that's what you want to avoid. You want this frame to be way back over in this area, and that's a sign of a good site. In fact, you, this is, these are done in half-second increments. Mine are generally in tenth of a second increments because that's about as fine as the uh, video capture on web page test will give to you. Um, and very rarely uh, does my timeline ever go past uh, three seconds. Um, now mobile can be a little slower because those devices are not as powerful. I'm on an i7. Uh, I can't remember the specs on the public uh, Dulles server for web page test. Uh, you can obviously set up your own web page test infrastructure and do it internally. All right, um, let's go look at some things here. Uh, a little bad navigation. We'll stick with, uh, so what I wanted to do, I wanted to, in fact, let's do this. I ran one from Dallas. Let's just see if the one from London worked or not. Now, it looks like they've got a problem in London. I wanted to, like, compare it different places, but that's okay. Let's go back to the, uh, well, let's just compare the uh, home page to the internal page, and we'll see what we get with that. All right, so we can see that the internal page seems to render a lot quicker than the home page here, which is kind of surprising. Well, it's showing 3.5 seconds for that one, so that's really good. And then we're all the way up to 5.5 for the home page. Okay, so the, the uh, internal page rendered a little faster than the home page. Now, I do want to tell you when you do um, perform testing with web page test, don't just stick with one cycle run through. I generally do two, three, four. If it's my applications, I, I'll do 10 to 20 just to, to get uh, kind of a good average of what's going on. Um, I also look at it this way too. Um, I think web page tests, because of the overhead of the testing and stuff, probably adds about an extra 10% to all the latency. So even though this is 5.5%, we'll just say it's right around five seconds uh, to, to load. And this one's probably gonna be somewhere around three to three and a half on average. Again, we probably have to run some more tests just to verify, but this, is, this allows you to see kind of the difference between the two uh, pages. You can see how long, much longer the home page took than the interior page. That's kind of surprising to me because generally the interior pages are uh, much worse. Uh, okay, let's go back. Let's go down to the interior page. So they got a good grade on the time to first spot, which we've covered. Um, keep alive. You want to make sure those are enabled. We can go and look at that a little later. They do gzip their content. The problem is they're not caching. They're compressing their images, uh, and they're not really using cache very effectively for static content. That's probably a lot of, to do with their third party stuff. And it's to saying it's not effective use of CDN, but it's a, with an X. Uh, that means it, nece it couldn't necessarily determine it, is my understanding. Uh, I want to look at this compressed images, and we'll talk a little bit about the images that I've seen. Now, I, if we go to the Dallas Morning News, and we go down here, I want to show you something. If you see these, I have, these images are pretty small. I call them thumbnail size images. I have looked at some of these images over time and they are usually full size images. I remember I, there's one that I saved. I don't remember exactly where I saved it off the top of my head. I got it somewhere in my files, but um, this little image right here was like 1400 by 1600 in height and width. And then what they were doing was letting the browser resize it down. So there's two problems with that. Obviously it's a large file. And I want to say that file was like a meg or more in size at least. Um, and they were, then they were forcing the browser to resize it. So you're doing some things there. And this is, this is one of the, the reasons why you want to have pre-processing in place. Um, a, they, they should have sized that image down to the size it would be rendered. That eliminates the browser from having to go through and do it. Now when the browser has to do it, that means it invokes more CPU cycles, which um, uh, is more intensive on the process, the local processor. This is extra problematic on mobile devices because two things, the processor's not as strong, but 
it also causes more battery to be used and that means that your users have low, slower battery or shorter battery life but it, then at the size the payload that's coming down so an image of this size let's just call it 15 to 20 kilobytes and that may be a little high uh, for a little for a jpeg like this but if it's say 1600 by 1400 or whatever size you know big large size that is um, and it's a meg to two megs uh, that's a big difference 20k to a meg, megabyte um, so you think about that for your users bandwidth if you go to what does my page cost .com, um, that adds up really quickly for a lot of people remember about 25 percent of people in the u.s go over their monthly uh, bandwidth limits that means they pay for the extra data that's coming down by the megabyte and it can be very very costly so to be a good vendor to them, which is effectively what you are, you want to make sure you are limiting you are limiting their cost as much as possible. So by having properly sized images, you're lowering their bandwidth bill, you're increasing the the life of their battery, and it's also making the page render a lot more efficiently. Uh, now I'm going to get more into responsive images. Um, if you want to go to cloud4.net uh, on the blog that they have, they have a great series of 10 articles about responsive images. I do recommend that everybody go read that. Um, I will be writing some more content and probably producing some videos possibly around uh, responsive images in the near future. So stay stay tuned for that. So, um, so if we go look at their images here, it's uh, compressed images. Um, this isn't too bad of a number of images that are on the page to see only four or five of those that have failed and they're relatively small images so that's good they this that's probably where their payload differences come from they probably have gotten a lot more discipline about their images so that's really good to see um, I have no opinion pro or con about progressive JPEGs um, it's not something I've done enough research in to really have a position on that yet um, and then of course we, the this is the content that doesn't have any browser caching involved, and it's about half of the assets are on a CDN, which is good. You should try to try to put as much on a CDN as possible, um, that because it makes it closer to the end user, uh, and you can also configure the servers to serve up static content really super fast, as opposed to something like an ASP.NET server. So with that, I'm going to wrap this uh, perf audit up. Um, I am going to give the Dallas Morning News a little, little uh, crud here. Um, I was really expecting to be able to ding them quite hard because I've done a lot of audits on them in the past, personally, because of the amount of time I've spent there, and it's been really, really bad. Uh, this is not too bad after all, um, at least for a newspaper site. They've got a lot of work they could do. Um, I really encourage them to eliminate third-party scripts as much as possible, but um, I think if they bundled and minified these pages, got rid of these ASP AS classic ASP page requests, this is really a bad sign. Their stats is way out of date. Um, uh, yeah, just bundled this, their JavaScript and stuff up. Um, uh, probably eliminated some of their images, maybe using sprites and stuff like that, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, they, they, they could, they've got some more work to do. And uh, yeah, the third-party scripts, just like most newspaper sites, are killing them. Um, this is this all this down here is nothing but third-party crap. And quite honestly, no one really cares about it as far as customers. This is um, just bad business decision making at the top levels. So the yeah, bundle minify that JavaScript. I'm not seeing the CSS like I've seen in the past either. Up oh, there's custom fonts right there. That's another thing I don't like. Um, Try to use the native fonts for the platforms. Uh, they've done a lot of research on the typography and the readability. So for Windows, Segway, for Android, the Robotica family, and for Apple-based uh, OSs, the Helvetica. Uh, if you stick to those three font families and then throw in, um, you know, like Arial and stuff as a as a fallback, fallback. Um, I think you're going to find uh, your pages were very readable. Um, this whole custom font thing is kind of a neat thing. Problem is, it's it's a performance issue, and we can look at uh, Fout and some other things about that uh, in the future. So, all right. Well, like I said, I want to wrap this up, and um, feel free to leave comments, uh, ping me on Twitter, and um, 
have maybe we can have a little dialogue if you got any questions about this, and maybe I can follow up more if there's if there's more detail. Thanks a lot, and have a great day. And as always, uh, do perf audits on your own work and uh, make the web a better place.